This could quite possibly be the worst movie I have ever, ever seen in Stop my life. Huh? Oracle? Fish Dragon? What are you two doing here? Don't you ever mock an American tale. It's a perfect movie! Yeah! It's a perfect movie! Shut up, Arco. Besides, what gives you the right to review this movie? But I'm a movie reviewer! It's my job! To review crap! This isn't crap, man! Why don't you just review Ace Ventura Pet Detective Jr.? Don't. You. Dare! Anyway... You are not reviewing an American tale. But it's a terrible movie. There are so many things wrong with it. Like what? Well, for how the mouse is too cute. Or how the uh, character's voices are so annoying. That's not a good reason. You... Wait. Did you cry at this movie? Stop it! There you... There! That, that high-pitched response. That tells me you're hiding the truth. Meaning... You did cry at this movie. You've been watching Lie to Me again, haven't you? So? It's a good show. Uh, guys? What's Lie to Me? SHUT UP! After a long opening credits, which reminds us of a time when the film credits used to be at the start rather than the end. We see our story begins in Soskat, Russia in 1885. 1885?! Great Scott! We meet our family of the story and the overly cute mouse who is the star of the film. You can tell he's the star of this movie with his big eyes, overly high-pitched voice, and that his clothes are at least two sizes too big. It belongs to you. Happy Hanukkah. Ain't I precious? It's too big. You'll grow. <laughs> and if you don't, Mother Mouse will not be happy. Apparently Mother Mouse sounds like Dracula also. Ah, ah, ah. The father tells his children just how great America is when a village is burnt down by some unknown men on horses. Look, I know it's a kid's movie, but don't you want to explain why they're burning down the houses? So to keep to the cat hate mice theme, Fifo, like an idiot, goes after the cats to chase them away. Are those cats roaring? Hey, Tigger, Tigger. Do you roar? I do think so. Oh, Fifle, Angel, are you all right? <laughs> yes, Mama. Then never do that again. What the fuck was that? They look upon the destruction the cats made and made the decision that they need to leave Russia. They go to Germany where a boat is set to set sail for America. Look, Papa, water. Is it the ocean? Yes, keep walking. Okay, what's the point of the music to stop when the line stops? They ain't in the line, so that's not the excuse. <laughs> Keep walking! Keep walking! Keep walking! Keep walking so we can get this all over with! This is the last time I take you to America. Bye-bye! The boat sets sail for America and we get a few bonder moments with Fifo and his father. We saw some fish! Lucky you didn't see some cats! <gasps> cats! Gato! Cats! Cats! Ah! Cats! Just be glad they ate! This joke was too dirty to include. Won't it be nice to get to America where we don't have to worry about cat? But, but there are no Wow, this song is so generically written, you could put any sad story in it. Watch! I was a little lad all on my own. Then one day I was caught into the headmaster's office. And he told me 
I had been diagnosed with dyslexia. But... But there are no cats in America. And the streets are paved with cheese. See? It's not that hard. The storm worsens as Firefall is shaken all across the ship and ends up at the bottom of the stairs, where he wants to investigate further. So by throwing his hat upstairs, he has an excuse to go to the top. But it looks like he should have thought twice about being a moron as he is swept away from the ship. <laughs> the family makes it to America while mourning the loss of their son. But it turns out every dumb action has a life saving moment as Five Volt is washed up on shore in New York in a bottle alive. He befriends a French pigeon who takes him under his care to get him warmed up. I'll never find them anyway. If you give up, you will never find your family. So, never say never. Say never say never, whatever you do. Never say never, you just did, in fact, twice. Pigeon gets one of his girls to take him to the immigration, where he hopes to find his parents. And the constant teasing of this movie begins! I'll take one, two, give me. Ah, what are they cooking in there? There are millions of roaches who give their left oh, feet away for our Oh, I thought they were making cookies. We meet our villain of the film, Warren T. Rat. Ah, you see what they did there, Warren T. He is played by John Finnegan, who sadly lost his life on July 29, 2012. It turns out he lost money and hates to lose money. I hate to lose money. But unfortunately, Fifel is dropped on the rat's roof and falls through the hole. Why didn't you just drop him on the ground? Plot convenience? Somehow, Warren sees this as an opportunity to earn the extra 50 cents and leads Fifel to what he believes are his parents. Fifel's family continues to mourn at their new home when only downstairs is Fifel. The rat takes him onto the lift to see his parents. Wow, he's actually keeping to his word. Uh, I, I guess he's just going to ask the extra 50 cents from his family as an award for finding, which I can understand that. I mean, but yeah, he wasn't a bad guy in this. Uh, I don't know what people are complaining about. This is where you are. Papa! <laughs> Bastard! He is actually sold to a slave labourer and is forced to work for him. And later that night, Fifel thinks of a way to escape and befriends our other main character, Tony. You think he's just a one-off scene character like the slave labourer? Unfortunately, you're wrong. Fifel goes searching on his own but gets nowhere. After a while of searching, he meets back up with Tony and goes off to search with his family together. Hey, 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 hey! What, we engaged or something? <clears throat> you can't find what's not there. D this, there they are! Look down! They're just there! What, you, you can't hear his voice! Listen! He's... D d d d d d d you idiot! This is America. We have free speech. You can say cat here. Cat, 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 and double cat. Actually, that was triple cat. Cat, cat. Double cat. No, quadruple cat. And why is the word cat such a taboo word? I don't like Captain America, but I ain't gonna get scolded for it. Where are you going? Ugh. Hey! Tony! Come on! Get back to helping him! Tony! Hey! Hey! Tony! 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 Hey! Tony! Slut! So there are cats in America making that song completely useless. Some scrap, huh? There are cats here. Where will I tell? Oh. Well, Mr. Derrick. Damn it! Look behind you! Turn back! Go the other way! 
Yeah. If you haven't guessed already, <laughs> this is what the movie is all about. F***ing teasing you! Five old Tony and Slut go to wherever this place is, and we overhear the most powerful mouse in New York discuss to the mayor about organising a rally to stop the cats. Slut takes Fifle back to her place for the night so he can pick up again tomorrow. Wow, what an unbelievable coincidence! The two brother and sister mice are singing the exact same song which they both made up on the spot. <gasps> Brothers and sisters think so alike, don't they? The next day is the rally where Fifle is and guess what? The family is there too! During the rally, Fifle thinks of a plan to stop the cats and tells the woman. She thinks the plan is a good idea and she puts it into action. Cute little fellow. <laughs> Wait a minute. I think this little fellow has got something here. Tony and Fifo are running late and while Tony is trying to chase sluts, Fifo gets left behind and thinks he hears his father playing the violin. Yeah, because only his father can play the violin, right? Fifo goes down the sewer and finds the cat's hideout, where we meet Tiger, an anti-hero who turns good guy. Oh, sorry. Spoiler alert! We also meet up with Warren again and make a chilling discovery. You're not a rat, you're a cat. How'd you get in here? Come here, you little... Ah! Ah! Okay, so we have cats that can roar and cats that can howl. I'm surprised the designers of this movie even knew what a cat looked like. Well... I suppose we know where Warren can get the extra 50 cents from. The pig goes... Wank! The cow goes... Shazoo! It most certainly does not! Fifle manages to escape and... <laughs> oh, you idiot! That night, Tiger is on guard to keep Fifo in the cage. Turns out Tiger is a vegetarian and apparently a Wizard of Oz lion impersonator. Wait, the cat just purred? Okay, at what point did Steven Spielberg say to his production staff, Cats don't bark! Stupid riders. Tiger sets him free, forgetting about the alarm, allowing Fifo a chance to escape. Good. I'm glad. I never liked you, and besides, your music stinks. Fifo leads the cats to a warehouse and Warren's secret is out, and after refusing to pay him off it and hand over Fifo, the cats set fire to the warehouse, but luckily for the mice, the time has come for... Can you guess what? We waste the secret weapon! We waste the secret weapon! Ladies and gentlemen, let's get ready to rumble! Ah uh, yes, yeah, so many references I can use here. <sighs> Which one? Um, just so many I can use here. I mean, just um. Actually, I think I will go for this one. I get you next time, gadget. Next time. <laughs> oh, don't worry, gentlemen. Don't worry. There are plenty of mice in Hong Kong. Back at the warehouse, Fifo is knocked out and ready to be burnt alive. Tony and Slut go looking for him and the family join the search. After realising they are looking for the same mouse, they team up and the fire service is washing him away once more. I'll never find them again anyway. Never. Never. 
Oh, five. Haven't you learned anything from this movie? Never say never, never. Never say. Kid, please cheer up. You. Five. You. You make. You bastard. Is that? Fivel! Oh. <gasps> don't give up! Don't give up, Fivel! Yes! There they are! Yes! Go back! No! Back! Go take Hulk! from the dead. Oh, I nearly forgot. Here, Bible, your head. My statue. Why is he back? Oh, <laughs> screw it. It doesn't matter. They get back together. We end on a tour of the Statue of Liberty and... Okay, from now on, I'm off this stuff. What's that over there? Well, that is more America. Can we go see it? Oh, <laughs> you will, my little American. <laughs> no, we're not going to lose Fivel again. Until the sequels and spin-offs. So that was American Tower, one of the first movies to ever make me cry. The first being Fox and the Hound. I loved this movie when I was a kid, and after watching it growing up, I can say it does hold up. The animation is amazing, with a basic storyline that leads to many sad and suspenseful moments. Although there are some issues with the movie, like the love at first sight scene and the annoying female dictator, it is still a movie to check out. Also guys, I just want to give a big shout out to Tom who lent me this DVD for the purposes of this review. If it wasn't for him, it wouldn't be possible, because my VHS player is broken. And I only had it on VHS. <laughs> Dead <Damn> movie! <laughs> now you make me cry on my VCR! <laughs> Thank you very much for watching, guys. Remember to like, comment, favorite, subscribe, sleep with me, and call me the next day if you want to see more videos similar to this one. See you later, guys. Keep on being awesome.